Should people starve? Why isn't shelter a right? The reason why it's not a right is because in this country, we believe in labor. We believe that the sweat of your brow is worth money or dollars. And dollars, everyone has accepted is worth a certain value. And when you go to the store, it is accepted that certain amount of labor has gone into this green dollar. That your boss has decided this and this amount of green dollars was worth your sweat and your labor. And you're there to purchase products with your labor. And he will take these green dollars and with his labor that he is doing, working in the store, he will buy products for himself. These are basic economic principles. Basic economic principles do not include the government bailing people out of mortgage crises, of people who did not read the fine print. Mortgage lenders are not evil, conniving, greedy people out to make a profit. They are businessmen working in the world. And because you failed to pay your mortgage loan, and because there are many Americans who failed to pay their loans, and their loans were specifically designed for people without money, hoping that maybe they would pay some of it with huge interest rates, does not mean the government will come in and bail them out. It is ridiculous. It is un-American. Your views, I think to most conservatives, sound Marxist. They sound Stalinist in its tactics and Marxist in its principles. And we believe they're wrong and against everything that America stands for. It is not individualism. It is not Americanism. And you and your party, including your opposition, which I see no difference in, except both of you fighting to find the most extreme of the left, both believe in things that we do not agree with. What do you have to say about that? Minus the fucks, minus the personal insults, what is your response to this serious criticism of the conservative Republican Party that it pre-debate? Because as a man who's running for president, I would assume that you can answer specific questions on what it is you believe in. Because we don't believe in the things you believe in. Senator Obama, the floor is yours. This is an actual Obama speech. Just remember, my friends, the ballot is stronger than the bullet, and the sad duty of politics is to establish justice in a sinful world. Remember, you cannot ignore politics no matter how much you'd like to. To put the world right in order, we have to first put the nation in order. To put the nation in order, we have to first put family in order. To put the family in order, we have to first cultivate our personal life. We must first set our hearts right. We must have hope. It again, again, line. It's a mighty good road. Those who say religion has nothing to do with politics don't know what religion is. Politics, perhaps, is the only profession for which no preparation or thought is necessary. The price of apathy towards public affairs is to be ruled by evil people. I've always said, and you've heard me say it over and over again, in politics, your enemies can't hurt you, or your friends will kill you. Ideas are great arrows, but there has to be a bow, and politics is the bow of idealism. To ride, you got to ride it. Like a Take it at the station on a rock on line. Oh, oh, oh. 
Remember this, politicians are the same all over. They promise to build a bridge even when there is no river. And anyone who wants a presidency so much that he'll spend two years organizing and campaigning is not worth to be trusted with this office. It's a rock out in line. Oh, change. Here, we are the way of politics ought to be in America. The politics of happiness. <laughs> the politics of purpose. The politics of joy. The politics of hope. In our brief national history, we have shot four of our presidents, we've worried five of them to death, we've impeached one, we've hounded another out of office. When all else fails, we hold an election, we assassinate their character. A national political campaign is better than the best circus ever. Heard of, best circus ever heard of, with a mass baptism and a couple of hangings thrown in politics. An organized minority is a political majority. I never submitted the whole system of my opinions to the creed of any party or men, whatever. Whatever, in religion, philosophy, politics, or anything else, where I was capable of thinking for myself. Such an addiction is a last degradation of a free and moral agent. If I couldn't go to heaven with a party, I wouldn't go there at all. And if they didn't have cigars there, I wouldn't bother either. Popular government without popular information, with the means of acquitting, is but a prologue to a farce of a tragedy, perhaps both. Politics, my friends, is the art of looking for trouble, finding it everywhere, diagnosing it incorrectly, and applying the wrong remedies. We don't have money problem in America, we got values and priorities problem. Washing one's hands of the conflict between the powerful and the powerless. The hopeful and the hopeless means to side the hopeful, the hopelessness, and not be neutral. People who don't vote have no line of credit, my friends, with people who are elected and thus pose no threat to those act against our interests, that act against our interests. The people of this country, not special interests, the people of this country, not special interests, big money, should be the source of all political power. For free society cannot help the many who are poor, it cannot save the few who are rich. And none of this can happen without hope and change. It's a mighty good road. It's a road to ride.